Good evening, everybody. My name is Jay Merriman, principal of Brookside School. I'm joined here by my colleague, Dr. Nicole Sanders. Tonight, we have an incredible opportunity where we're going to bring to you a group of youth leaders, both current students and former students here in our city of New Britain. Tonight, they're going to share with you their experiences, stories of their time here in New Britain. Those stories and experiences are going to be centered around equity diversity and inclusion. I ask our audience at home to help us create that space so that students may speak their truth this evening. We can do that by staying engaged. Know that tonight you're gonna to hear lots of stories, which is we are gonna encourage. Know that there may be moments of discomfort. Um, that discomfort is okay. We should be comfortable in that discomfort. Um, those of us who come from privilege, myself included, may experience that discomfort more than others. I ask you to stay engaged, listen to our youth. The student voices that we have here before you are what drive our educational system. Without further ado, each student will come up, introduce themselves to you and begin sharing. I ask the audience at home once again to stay engaged. Tonight we will begin with Daniel. Hello, um, I'm Daniel Sr. I go to New Britain High School and I am a freshman. I've been in the district since kindergarten and I haven't left since. Um, I mean, from elementary school, it's, it was a pretty good year in the district. There was a lot of support from my teachers and my friends. Um, it was never really like, uh, it was never hard for me in, in a way. It was never like a, ch a challenge. Of course, the work was challenging, but I mean like to get along with people, it was never a challenge for me because I felt like everyone was kind of in the same place. Um, but I feel like once I got to fifth grade is when everything really like started becoming real. I feel like, cause when you're like fourth below, it's kind of just, you're just growing up and you're trying to figure out how life works. And then you get to fifth grade and it's a completely different world and you don't know what's going on, or what's going to happen. So I feel that the district has done a pretty good job of that of most things relating to that. Um, middle school. So I get to middle school, right? Um, it starts off pretty well, I guess. I find, make my new friends because you don't survive with friends. As you probably all know, you have to have someone to talk to or else you're gonna be sitting there alone for the rest of your, your middle school year, which is never fun. So there's that. But I feel like there was always people that would try to go out of their way to make your day worse for no reason it's like you could just be walking down the hallway and then they'd say something to you like for no reason and it was like always that feeling of uncomfort when you go to school sometimes but also it was that feeling of safety when you would go to your friends or like go to class and your best friend was there and then you just start laughing the whole class and your teacher hates you because you can't get any work done but i mean hey you're you're we're kids what, what are you gonna do talk but yeah um uh, um, next year, seventh grade, seventh grade was, it was a ride. It was a ride mentally. And I feel like mental health, especially this year, is something that um, everyone is going through right now. And I feel like everyone needs a little bit of a mental break from everything. Just because the fact that, um, especially being home all day and not getting to see many people, because I know a lot of people are online because of the pandemic, which is, 100% valid, but I mean, um, yeah, I feel mentally it was definitely a challenging year, but I got through it. So, I mean, eighth grade was, that was when it sucked even more because that was when COVID hit and everything was meant to happen, like my graduation and um, the trips were meant to go on because, you know, you get to graduate, but I feel as though um, losing that stuff, although we had no control over it. It's definitely something that hurt a little bit because you see everybody else have to have it's the experience in eighth grade and they get to have a fun time and then you just sit there like oh i wish i had that but at the same time there's nothing you can really do about it because it was a second situation eighth grade the end of eighth grade year at least but it also came with good things like you get to find yourself in that long quarantine time where we thought we'd be back in two weeks but it's been over a year now since we've 
since this whole thing started, which is crazy to me. But and then we have now. Now it's. I mean, I've met new people. I've kept the same friendships, and I feel as though I have a good support system around me. That I feel like if I ever need anything, they would support for me, which is always a great thing to have, especially now. But I haven't really had a hard time in this district, which I'm glad I can say because I know for for a lot of people that's not something that they can say. So that that's pretty much it for me. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Alanis. Um, I go to New Britain High School, and I'm in ninth grade. Um, when I was five, I moved to New Britain. Um, I didn't really know anybody here. Um, also because I was new. So when I went to kindergarten in Smith Elementary, I made new friends. I still am friends with one of my kindergarten friends now. Um, so everything was basically chill elementary school years. Um, I met my best friend in elementary school. I'm still friends with some people that I um, met in elementary school. So elementary school, you don't really have any like worries or you don't have any of those like you rarely get bullied in elementary school, especially like in elementary school, it's just like silly and it's like goofy. But then when you get to middle school, that's when it like really hits because like Daniel said, people would just make remarks like out of the blue in the hallways and stuff like that. Like I know during my sixth and seventh grade years, um, I did get bullied a lot because of the way I looked and the way I dressed because I was one of those girls who throughout elementary and middle school, I always wear dresses. So um, that bullying kind of made me insecure in a way. Um, like I felt like I had to hide my body because people were bullying me on my bot, like by my body and like the way I was shaped. So I felt like I had to hide that because I didn't want to get bullied for it because it just made my self-esteem just really get down. Um, my sixth grade year is when I got bullied a lot because there was really bad people in my class. Um, and unfortunately, they were in all of my classes. So I got bullied pretty rarely. Um, seventh grade year, um, I didn't really get bullied a lot. Um, seventh grade year, I made, I made brand new friends. I got comfortable in my class. Um, seventh grade year was probably the best year in middle school for me. And then eighth grade. COVID may just everything stir around in a way um, because eighth grade, I lost a lot of things like formal and my graduation and um, my Washington trip. So, and we lost opportunity to like actually finish the rest of the year in person because we all thought this was just going to be for two weeks, but it ended up being for the rest of the year. And continuing on to this year, we still have to go by safety protocols, six feet apart, masks on at all times and stuff like that. Um, it did cause like a little bit of like a loneliness for me um, because usually school is like my place where I get to be myself and I get to like branch out, meet new people, socialize and stuff like that. So I did become a little bit lonely. I used to just sit in my room on my phone all the time um, on my computer just doing those types of things all the every single day, all the time, where it became to like, I barely had social skills. So when I went, went to high school, um, I get anxiety in the hallways because I'm not used to that many people anymore, especially since more people are going to the high school now because in May, we're all going to go back. So now that people are going to the high school more often now, um, I find some of my friends to walk with so I don't like get my anxiety and stuff like that. So like when I'm with my friends, um, I don't like get really nervous around people and stuff like that. But this year so far is actually going pretty well due to the um, safety precautions and stuff like that. I still met new people, which is really fun for me because I'm very, I'm a very social, sociable person. And I like socializing and meeting new people and learning new things and things like that. Um, I have struggled with my mental health over quarantine, but quarantine also made me figure out who I am as a person and who I am, who I'm going to continue to be. And I feel like quarantine was actually kind of a good thing in some ways, but like it just helped me and maybe it helps some other people. But ninth grade year 
it was it's going pretty well for me um even with my um like mental problems and stuff like that um it's actually going pretty well for me i have the best support system my family my friends so i guess like i'm doing pretty well thank you Hi, my name is Jessica Tang, and I'm a senior at New Bern High. So I've been attending um, this school district since kindergarten as well. And um, I guess like I do love our city and I like going to school here, but there are definitely a lot of flaws that have to be addressed. So since the beginning, um, as an Asian American, I've um, dealt with a lot of microaggressions and of course, like, you know, um, people didn't see as a big deal. I didn't even see as a big deal. So, you know, um, you just deal with it. And it continued. And so like, there's not a big population of us here. So I feel like we're definitely underrepresented here. And um, a lot of times like people don't know much about us. Like I'm Cambodian American. And then when I try to bring up like my culture, people have no idea what it is. And I feel like it shouldn't be my job all the time to educate other people about that you know like i feel like maybe we should be included more so that we can have more of a voice um on top of that just like the student body in general i feel like sometimes we don't have a voice um there was one time um last year i think at the end of the school year when um the black lives matter movement was like erupting there was a student that was harassing other people and we tried to um, address it to um, school officials and the administration. And um, they looked at it, but then when we tried to have like a mediation meeting, they kind of switched the focus from the actual problem, which was racism, and they turned it onto us and gaslighted us instead by saying it was wrong for us to go to social media, even though there was no other outlet because they wouldn't have listened to us. So I just feel like it's really invalidating and like maybe this, they should start listening to students more. This is probably like one of the first events held by the school district where they're actually trying to listen to student voices. So I do appreciate that though. There's definitely a change being made and um, that's about it. Hi, um, my name is Anwar. I'm a ninth grader currently at New Bern High School. Um, as a woman that wears the hijab and I'm a Muslim, it's hard, I completely agree with Jessica, it's hard to put our culture out there. When I speak about our culture, people have no idea what it is. People refer to a hijab as a piece of scarf on my head. Um, I would really like to educate students out there to tell them that this isn't just a piece of scarf on my head. It's a hijab. It's part of my culture. It's who I am. And growing up, I did not wear the hijab because I was scared of how people would refer to me, how people would think of me. Um, as I started going to high school, I wore the hijab because I felt comfortable. I felt going out and doing it. Um, I walked into the high school. I didn't see many people wear the hijab like I did, but I saw many girls as I walked in wear the hijab. And it made me feel like as if I belong, it made me feel like as if I I could wear this hijab and not feel uncomfortable around people, not feel like people are judging me in some way. Um, I even see staff members that wear the hijab. It makes me feel comfortable walking around the hallways, not feeling like I'm, you know, I don't want people talking to me or like, it makes me feel like I am I belong. It makes me feel like I'm okay to be here. Um, New Bern High School is very welcoming in many cultures and also some things that happen in the high school is just because I wear the hijab people refer to the fact that sometimes I don't speak English so just because I wear the hijab does not mean that I don't speak English it's they have to be more educated in the fact that not all people that wear the hijab speak Arabic um, also people don't really know about our culture as much and it's hard to educate people about, oh, 
what is Ramadan? What do you do during Ramadan? It's it's the little things that matter a lot. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Augustina, and I am a ninth grader at New Brand High School, and I have also been attending New Brand School since I was five years old in kindergarten. And I want to preface that these stories I tell, I don't say that I was bullied growing up, because I wasn't, and I never referred to it like that then, and I still don't think it was now. Um, but like people had mentioned before, my first few years were great. Um, I started at Gaffney for kindergarten, then moved to Lincoln for first, then North End for second. And I had a really easy time making friends since I knew I wasn't going to see them the year after since I moved around a lot. And then I finally made it to Vance and I stayed there for three years. And at eight years old, when I moved, we weren't exactly mature, but it wasn't just, you know, counting blocks or playing hopscotch on the playground anymore. I was always the only Asian kid in my class. And my peers would pull their eyes back and giggle. And that led to an insecurity about the way my eyes form crescents when I smile or laugh. And they'd stick up their pinky finger at me and say made up syllables in Chinese. And I'm Laotian and Cambodian, by the way, which is nowhere near China. Um, these schoolyard actions would follow me for the next few years as I tried to come to terms with my own self-identity. It brought me to this dramatic shift in perspective as I looked at myself and I wondered, am I too Asian to be an American? And I didn't think about it like that back then. I was eight. But, you know, looking back on it now, I definitely felt different. Um, despite knowing that I was born here, they kind of treated me a little differently. And I just thought, you know, maybe it's because I'm a teacher's pet, you know, following all the rules isn't exactly cool when you're a kid. Um, I had begun to let go of that small light that I shed on my Asian heritage. And I tried to blend in my classmates as best as I could. And then middle school hit. Um, now it's not about what my people peers can see or what they've heard from movies or shows, but of these caricatures of Asian people that they've built in their own head. Um, I was a social butterfly in middle school who had a connection with almost all of my peers, but unfortunately, friendship does not withhold stereotyping. Every time I succeeded or made even the slightest academic achievement, like answering a question in class or landing a higher score on a test, um, it was completely invalid because it was in my blood um, due to the fact that there's a stereotype that Asians are smart and scholarly, scholarly, completely ignoring the fact that there are around 50 countries in Asia and both sides of my family happen to come from countries who are uh, that are like drowning in poverty. And I hadn't connected the dots between those offhand comments and my diminishing work ethic in middle school until quarantine had begun. And not all experiences I've had were as direct as this. Um, there are smaller uh, acts, microaggressions, that can also be quite damaging, like the time uh, in the eighth grade when I went to school without my glasses on because they were broken. And my math teacher had tossed me an expo marker. I was only about two feet away, and I caught the marker, and he said, wow, I didn't expect you to see that. And he laughed it off and continued whatever he was doing. However, my peers and I had heard it and we had registered, you know, what was wrong with the statement. Um, even if he hadn't caught on to what he said before he said it. Um, and in case for those who don't understand, it's a reference to Asian eyes being small. And even if if it was just him alluding to the fact that my glasses were broken, there was like no place for a comment like that, especially to an Asian American. And then when the pandemic started in 2020, there was this huge wave of anti-Asian sentiment and it was called racist names and Asians were being harassed. And that was when I finally took pride in who I was as an Asian American and stood up for myself. Like this one time, one of my friends, had imitated an Asian immigrant's accent 
as a joke. And when I tried to explain what was wrong and why that was so hurtful, he just said, well, I don't mean it, you know, to be hurtful. It's just a joke. Nobody's, it's not offensive. And I had stopped being his friend after that. Um, my whole life, I felt the need to laugh along to those jokes, to play along and act like I was not bothered. However, that was when I had finally found my voice as an Asian American. And while those school experiences built strength within me, I don't think any person should have to face that sort of regret of letting go of their cultural and racial identity just to fit in. I think that if my peers in both elementary school and middle school were given more exposure to different cultures and different things, then maybe they wouldn't have treated me as foreign as they did. And, you know, we're just more understanding about that. And, and I think that if we really just bring that sort of cultural awareness to everybody, the next generation of Asian Americans won't just try to tuck away their originality and try to fit in. Thank you. Hi, um, my name's Niana. I'm a sophomore at um, New Bern High School. Um, I've been in the district since kindergarten as well. And I think that throughout my elementary school years that I didn't really experience anything that was too much. I mean, a lot of things I've forgotten because I suppressed it. Like one, one thing that really like sticks to me is like my first grade year, which is like, you know, it's pretty young and like you're still learning about like other people. But as a kid, I was like very quiet and I didn't like to talk to other people a lot. And it would like, it would make me distant from other people. And especially because in my classes, I didn't know anybody else that was Asian. And like, I would just stick by myself. And then like one day we had another student and she came in and she was also Asian, but they, my teachers stuck her to me because she didn't understand any English. But I, th I thought it was a little wrong for them to stick, like put her with me because they both thought we spoke the same language, but we weren't from the same country and we didn't speak the same language. But it was nice to have a friend to talk to. And it was like a good thing that I really liked, but I think the intention behind it was like a little misjudged because we're not like the exact same. Because I think that when people think about Asians, they think that they're all from like the same place or the same like three countries when it's not like that at all, because we're all very diverse, just like every other like ethnicity and every culture. And, and like that year, I think I experienced the most like something with my race. Like I was like, there was a girl and um, since I didn't talk a lot, sometimes people try to talk to me. And at first I thought she was being kind to me, but then she just kept bothering me, asking for work because I'm quote Asian, I'm smart and I should know how to do it. And things of like, if I said I didn't know how to do it, she would say, like, you know, what's wrong with you, which I don't, it's not something you should say, because, you know, it's not true for everybody, and it's a stereotype, and I was afraid of getting in trouble, so I just let that happen for the year, and then that was, like, the only experience I had in elementary school where something not so good happened, but then moving on to middle school, I think that I definitely branched off and made a lot more friends, because, um, people enjoyed learning about other cultures. Like as, in my middle school during my years with my friends, they really enjoyed like learning about where I was from or languages or practices and things. But I think like something that still stuck on was that idea of like, if you're Asian, you're smart, you should know how to do this, you're this and that being like a model or whatever. And I believe that that really set me down because I didn't really say anything about it because I was like, it was like something in my mindset where I learned to not say anything about it because people would really suppress it. And I, I think that it shouldn't be like that because you should be able to stand up for yourself no matter like what the problem is. And I believe that now, especially like going into high school, like last year, um, I definitely experienced things with people talking about my race and um, making like remarks about my race and saying, I do certain things because of my race. I really stood up for myself and I'm proud that I did because 
it shaped me more. And especially after coronavirus, like when the pandemic started, um, I started standing up for myself and I like embraced my culture because it's something I should be proud of and something everyone should be proud of. They should be proud of their culture. And I just think that recently that Asian Americans, I'm glad that most are having a stronger bond together because, you know, we are facing something that isn't so positive and it makes us stronger together, but there are still some things that should be addressed. And I believe that, um, I hope that we can like move on from something like this. Thank you. Hi, my name is Isaiah Rodriguez. I'm a 2020 graduate of New Britain High School. I've been in New Britain School District since North End Elementary School, all the way to Vance and Pulaski. The, the transition of Pulaski to New Britain High School was a major effect for me, from me being called multiple names, from kids looking at me because of the shape I was, because I was, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of chubby. And um, I was being called names side to side. Um, and from when I went to um, high school, my freshman year, a lot of things changed. Um, I was no more very scared of to be who I am. I wasn't worried about how I looked anymore. And I will, I will, I felt good because I moved into the Brent High and it was a good transition. But as the years went in, I noticed that not, not a lot of things changed. People did, still did remarks, but they, they ended it with saying, oh, I'm playing bro, or it's all jokes. And they didn't realize that that was some type of bullying. They, they didn't understand that it was kind of hurtful at some times. But for them, it was all jokes and games for them. As I went into my sophomore year, I was called a bum because of the clothes I was wearing and the shoes that I kept on using over and over. So I started to give in and I changed my style. I started buying clothing and shoes that wasn't my style and I was doing things that wasn't me. And as I went into the school years and I started realizing that I was getting attention, it felt good, but it really wasn't me. And I didn't, I didn't really like that. So I, I, I've thought to myself and I talked to my moms and she helped me realize that being myself is the best way. So as I went in back into New Britain High School for my junior year, I didn't care anymore. I dressed the way I wanted to dress. I did my schoolwork. I was me and it felt good. But the remarks of everybody still kept on going on. But I didn't let it affect me because in this world, everybody's always going to say remarks about you. My mom always told me it was that empathy that people have for you because they couldn't be you. And I always kept that in my head because it made me feel good. So as I went in, I finished all my classes. And by the time I had my senior year, I already had 21 credits. I only needed two more classes. So for my senior year, I only had two more classes to, to do to graduate. So as soon as I almost finished, that's when COVID hit. And I finished my school years off throwing, throwing a Chromebook until March 13th. I was informed that I will be passing if I passed all my class. And that's when I finally noticed that I was a graduate. And it was amazing for me because from the teachers being supportive for me from my freshman to high school um, to my senior year, they gave me a lot of examples. They gave me reasons to keep on moving forward. And there are always teachers that let, let me lean on their shoulder when I needed them. And um, there's multiple things that happened during the school years I was there. And honestly, it was just difficult for me to see because the cat calling to the females, the touching on females because they're on sports teams and they didn't care about how the females felt or just certain things the guys would do in that school. It was just really hurtful. And I couldn't believe it to my eyes because I really, wouldn't really think a man could do that to a female until it was in front of me. But honestly, the school of the Brent High was hard in the beginning. But as it moved forward, it was good. And that's what I have to say for now. Thank you. So I just want to take a moment to thank all of our, our students and our former student, our graduate, um, for participating tonight and, and sharing their stories and willing to speak their truth um, and, and lay the groundwork 
for for much healing that needs to take place in our community. Um, many more conversations like these right here that need to take place. Um, again, as we uh, also become comfortable with being uncomfortable um, and not retreating from conversations such as these and, and truly, truly being willing to listen to student voice and, and to grow from that, grow from that as a community within our schools um, and, and within ourselves. Uh, with that, I'd like to take this opportunity if people have some some questions for this incredible group of young leaders and, and also allow Dr. Sanders to chime in if she has some, some thoughts on this evening thus far. I'm, I was just trying to get off mute. I, I'm just going to um, echo what, um, what Jay said. Um, on behalf of the superintendent, before we start to um, take a, a few questions of how we are so proud that you all can enter this space to tell your truth. And, and I'm a little biased right now because um, Ms. Augustina was one of my students. Um, and, and the articulation um, of your story really um, touched something in me um, tonight to know that I was your principal um, and didn't possibly recognize that um, those things were going on within you and possibly even to you. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that to make me a better person and, and to think also differently as we go through this healing process. So um, I, I definitely thank you for um, for that in in um, the 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 theme that I was hearing from you young people, and we use this word uh, a lot is is your resilience, right? Um, in 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 having that internal drive and support from community and family and friends that let you know to Isaiah's point is that I am important, that I am special, and and in that. I can embrace who I am in my culture, um, but the push to get there, right, is what's difficult. And, and how, as adults who are with you every day, be a little bit more mindful and aware of what's potentially happening. And to start that engaging conversation, um, with 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 young people, um, and and so I definitely applaud that. In in to Jay's point, knowing is that these conversations will um, be a part of um, superintendent's five year plan of what is it that we do to start the healing process. What do we start to do when um, our when our when our babies leave elementary school, right, and go to middle school, and those dynamics change because you're figuring out who you are. But then, when I enter as an Asian American or a Black woman or um, um, someone who's a part of the LGBTQA community, how am I going to be accepted? And and I and I forget who said it is. Is it my job to always teach other people about me? Right? That's that fatigue that sits in because this is who I am. And, and and that's a part of our charge. And it's a hard charge. Um, and it's something that's growing nearer and dearer to my heart as we have these forums. Um, but when the students, the young people speak. I will um, tell you it does a, it does something different to me. Um, so I, I thank you all for adding to my learning, my growth, and and my journey um, this evening. Jay, I think we may have some questions. Yeah, I know there was one that came back a while ago. I was trying to jot them down. It was um, I can't tell you who it came from at the moment, but I know it was directed towards Daniel and it was about, um, Daniel, what inspired you to tell your story? Well, there it is. Can you hear me already? Can you? Okay. Um, I think that um, 
I feel like there are a lot of people who are willing to go and share their story because of that fear of that judgment of what other people may think of you or how it will affect you in the future or in school or wherever you go. <clears throat> and I feel like um, we all have our different unique stories, but there also are different pieces that we can all relate to throughout going through like um, our journey through school. But I definitely think that a major thing is that whenever something happens, there isn't a lot of nothing's being done about it. And I feel like when there's a situation at school, you go to the principal, you tell them, and then they're supposed to do something. And then they end up never ever thinking about it. You always see them doing the stuff that doesn't matter the most. And it's like when someone's being affected, really affected by something, they don't really take as much pride into fixing it. But when it's something like very minor or something that affects the school or like the image of the school, they will take that first. But I feel like that's wrong because they should be taking what is affecting the students and not their own image throughout the years of whatever happens. So to go back to the question, um, yeah, just being that voice that some people need because I feel like not everyone can share their story and I want to be that person. So that's it. Thanks, Daniel. Another question I see up there, this one's for Augustina. Augustina, if you could go back and talk to that teacher who remarked on you catching the marker without your glasses, what would you want to say to him? Um, Frankly, I don't really know. Um, probably with this newfound pride, I'd probably inform him as to why it wasn't right. However, this was in late 2019, early 2020. He probably should have been aware at the time. But I honestly probably would have just said, hey, that's not okay to say. You know, that's, that can have, like, racist connotations to it and just inform them about it because apparently I had heard from another student who had that same teacher received a similar comment when she had not had her glasses. And he said, she said, wow, you know, I can't see the board that well. And he said, well, just open your eyes. And, you know, knowing that he's made a comment like that before, it's just really uneasy. And I definitely tell him that saying stuff like that is wrong and that it you know he should never make comments like that and yeah i just i didn't form him and educate him thank you um, our next question comes from Anne marie mancini and this will be open to anyone from the panel to chime in how do we work at the elementary level to teach our students about one another's culture in a way that is sensitive and respectful how can these amazing high schoolers help with their powerful voices so that's open to any one of you who want to chime in. And if more than one of you want to answer that question, that's OK as well. Um, I will I'll, I'll speak up since I did like propose that idea, sort of. Um, New Brain is incredibly diverse, and I don't think it'd be very difficult to find somebody willing to come in and educate the kids. Um, I would say, however, if you can't get somebody from that, I, the best bet is to get somebody from that, that culture to teach the kids. However, if not, then I'd say to just do proper research. Sometimes you just want to do things without fully doing uh, a background search. And I think just doing thorough research on the topic and making sure to educate yourself on, you know, the do's and don'ts and how to respect it properly, then I think it's fine. I think it's Um, I definitely agree to that. Um, I think one of the biggest issues is that stereotypes are often tossed around like nothing. Like, I think people should avoid um, using stereotypes and they should do proper research before they try to um, spread around misinformation about someone's culture. Uh, um, for me, um, I believe that if it's for elementary school and it's for, to be sensitive for the kids, ask them to bring something of their background, of their culture that they would like to show the other kids.
kids or talk about something that they've done with uh, with their culture and just make sure that like, the other kids are around to hear and notice and let the teachers may like do like a project, just something to get them intrigued of knowing what they come from, what their background is to know that they're, they're okay to be who they are, not afraid to be someone else or change from to see like how other people are. I'll go. I feel like um, when something like this does happen in elementary school, I feel as though it should be talked about because I feel like the teachers see it as just like they're just playing around kids being kids. But I feel like if you teach them early that what they're saying is not right or by any means they should be saying it at all, it should be taken more seriously because I feel as I feel like they just oh yeah they're just kids like having fun and making jokes. But I do feel like if you're from the start, if you're telling them that, and then as they go on through life, it's going to just stay that it was just a joke to them, but not consider what it means to other people, which is a major thing that people don't really consider how it affects you, how what you say, what you thought was the joke, could really hurt somebody um, emotionally. Thank you. So we have a few questions that pop through here. Um, let's see if I can catch up. Um, we have a question here from Orlando Ruiz, who is one of our district administrators. And he's asking and actually saying, which I, I agree wholeheartedly, we need your voice as future teachers. Is there anyone on this panel who's interested in becoming a future CSDNB educator? Um, I'm actually working towards um, hopefully becoming into the CSDMB um, organization by becoming a para. I am hopefully going to be taking the test soon and being ready to take um, further, further, um, how to say, um, I'm just ready to take it on and I'm hopefully, if I could pass the test for para, I could be a para in a Bryn Hyde or any school district. Well, um, I was thinking about being a teacher, but that's like not my first like thing that I do want to be. Um, but I love working with kids, so I would consider it um, because I have two siblings I love dearly, and um, I take care of them. I play around with them sometimes, so I know how to like work with kids. Um, I have been in a, a bunch of like little programs and activities where I have worked with kids and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I would consider being. Um, similar to what Alice just said, uh, Alanis just said, sorry. Um, I would, it isn't my first choice, but it is something that I would consider um, just because I feel though I want to become a teacher who teaches music because I feel like music for a lot of kids is a that they like really like love and that was something for me that was like my safe space doing music and i feel like in the future teaching music can touch a lot of people and i know it touched me because in the future either way i'm doing something with music because i mean it's it's it makes me happy yeah i mean i don't see why i wouldn't do something that makes me happy in the future i don't want to work like a next job there's nothing wrong with that but i don't want it. it's just not what i want to do myself so i mean Thank you guys. We have another question that came in from Nick Mercier, one of our board members. What are some of the things that you feel New Britain is doing well around these issues and what would be your one ask if you had a magic wand and could change a practice or policy that currently exists around equity, diversity and inclusion that we have here in CSDNB? Anyone can can answer that question. If I had a magic wand and I could have made one uh, like wish to come true, um, it will honestly be the fact that 
they would be people to see people who they are and people could be who they are and not be afraid to be judged by others and just people could express their feelings and not be afraid of being called names for being, I have to say, um, sentimental or just, I just want people to be happy with each other. That's one thing I want, if I can make that wish. And one thing that I do like that um, the district has been doing is the way that they have classes. Um, since when I was in Wren High, each class had multiple um, race and cultures inside there. And I'll have to say in my junior year, when I had my history class, Mr. Williams was my history teacher and he taught us every topic of everybody's culture there, at least he, at least as much as he can. And he helped us out see um, what other people already seen in their life. I totally agree with Isaiah. I, what, one thing that New Britain is doing very well with these issues is people are providing translations for Arab families that don't speak English or um, Hispanic families that don't speak English and they provide translations for them um, to go through steps like for um, registering for school, they provide steps for them in Arabic or Spanish for them to understand and keep them on notch with um, the district. And it looks like Superintendent Sarah has has a comment um, or more of a statement for our panel tonight. She wants to let you all know she's impressed with your insight and your strength. Even if you don't want to become a teacher as a profession, she is definitely stating that she needs your voices in the classroom. And I think um, myself as an administrator in the district, someone who's who's extremely proud to work for the city of New Britain and our school system. And uh, Dr. Sanders, I think we would wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, this is this has been a great step uh, this evening, um, one of many that need to happen, and and it starts with you guys. and And I think uh, the audience is letting you know that as well tonight. We hear you, uh, we stand with you, um, but there's much work to be done. I thought we had one question back there. I might have missed Dr. Sanders. I don't know if you caught it. Um, I think it was for Nye. Um, I think I found it. Um, the question is for you, what advice do you have for younger kids who might be going through what you went through um, as a student? Um, definitely. Like, I know a lot of um, kids, they grow up in like traditional, I guess you could say, households where maybe you don't have that much emotional support or support from your family. And I think that I wish I learned like when I was younger that, you know, I could speak out and talk to other people about it. Um, like things like the instance with bullying when I was younger, I think that definitely if I did say something about it, it would have stopped because it was honestly a very silly thing. And as a kid, you know, on my part and the other person's part, we didn't really know any better because we were children. So I think it should be like, we should like tell children and give them like the strength to talk about their feelings and definitely just reach out to others if they need. Dr. Sanders, I think that's it for the questions. I don't know if you have anything you'd like to say to this amazing group of young people that are here with us tonight. Um, other than um, we will be inviting you all <laughs> to sit in on um, um, upcoming focus groups so we can continue to hear your voice um, to empower you also um, to, to strategize with the superintendent, um, um, central office members and our, our great consultants that support um, Jay and I who are actually on in the audience this evening, um, um, Jay. So they've had an opportunity to meet um, students um, in the audience. So 
um, each of your names have been put on a list and um, you will be a part of the conversations moving forward as well um, so that we can continue to hear your voice and address some of the, um, the issues um, that was brought to the table um, this evening. And again, I just need to commend each of you for entering this space with two people that you did not know, um, Jay and myself. Um, and we share with the uh, share with the young people earlier is that we're just going to have a conversation as if you were talking to your friends, and you did that tonight. And I know your parents are proud of you. Your community um, is proud of you. Your superintendent is proud of you. And and Jay and I are definitely um, proud of you as you help us um, to become better people. So thank you. So thank you, Dr. Sanders. And again, um, as, as you all have heard throughout the evening, um, I myself am extremely proud of you and in the, in the courageous conversation that you helped get started this evening that will continue. Um, I want to encourage you all to continue to speak your truth. There were things like um, exposure, um, more exposure that were stated tonight in our classrooms. Um, the, the, the term microaggressions was used on more than one occasion. I would encourage our audience to go out there and, and take a, a, a deeper dive into what that means um, and, and the words that we say and how they matter and how they impact um, each, each and every one of us. So with that said, um, again, we thank you. We're gonna sign off, encourage you all to continue to speak your truth, stay engaged in these conversations, be willing to have them, and to our, to our youth leaders who joined us tonight and all the youth leaders who turned in, tuned in, we need you. Continue speaking. We're here for you. And we'll see you around campuses. Thank you all. Good night.